Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Global Monastery. It's Abby Odio. Uh, I'm thrilled to be with you today. If you have been journeying with us through the season of Lent, you know that um, at the start of each week, we are introducing a practice, a way, a lens of engaging scripture that's meaningful. And we're doing this sort of in parallel uh, with an invitation to read through the book of Mark, which of course is one of the um, gospel stories. It's one of the stories that tells the life of Jesus. And so if you've been with us, we're, we're grateful. If you're sort of new to this, uh, come, come get on the bandwagon with us. Um, I know for me, it's just been a really meaningful and enriching time to, to slowly work through some of these words. And one of the practices that's been really helpful for me as I've done that is the practice of meditation. Now, meditation is one of those words, sort of general, um, Meditation is a practice that we see embodied across various world religions. But in Christianity in particular, it's one of the ways God commands his people to engage with scripture. In Psalm chapter one, he says, uh, the psalmist writes that we should um, meditate on the law of the Lord day and night. Now that word meditate, uh, it kind of connotes uh, this image of a dog chewing on a bone. Like there's a an unhurried, uh, almost enjoyed way of uh, going about something, ingesting something until it becomes a part of you. And in that same way, uh, when we meditate on scripture, we're reading it, but we're, we're doing it in such a way that um, we're, we're slowly sort of enjoying it. We're paying attention. We're um, hoping that it becomes a part of our uh, soul, that it takes root in us, that it becomes a part of our lived experience in the world. And so one of the ways that um, I do that is uh, I open up the text to, to the, the chapter that I'm going to read for that day. So this morning, I, just a few hours ago, I spent some time in Mark chapter 8. And uh, before I begin reading, I said a quick prayer. God, uh, focus my eyes and my heart and my attention on what it is uh, that needs to take deeper root in me today. Amen. That's the prayer. Real simple. And then I begin reading. And uh, today I read and I, I came to uh, verse 17 and the disciples are um, out doing ministry and they'd forgotten to bring enough bread and they only have one loaf with them in the boat. And um, Jesus hears them discussing this and uh, he he has words for them. He says, you know, uh, don't you grasp what has happened? Don't you understand? Are your hearts so resistant to what God is doing? Don't you have eyes? Why can't you see? Don't you have ears? Why can't you hear? Don't you remember when I broke five loaves of bread for those 5,000 people? How many baskets full of leftovers did you gather? And so I was reading this and the word that stuck out to me this morning um, was leftovers. And so I just paused and I took a few minutes, not even a few, maybe one to two minutes uh, to just sort of meditate on that image of leftovers. So I stopped reading and I sat there, I was comfortable. I closed my eyes and I literally pictured in kind of my mind's eye, um, a basket billowing over with fresh bread. And I, I just focused on that image. I sort of chewed on it. What is in this for me, God? I was curious about it. Where in my life do I need to experience the fullness of God instead of kind of this scarcity mentality that the disciples are stuck in? God, help me to live into that image today of your fullness, of that bread, of, of those leftovers. Help me to trust in that as I go about my day. And I just sort of sat with that for a minute. And then, you know, after a couple minutes, I continued reading through the rest of Mark chapter 8. And when I was done, I said a quick prayer of gratitude and, and went about my day. So that's one way that we can engage this practice of meditation. Uh, one of my favorite authors, Kathleen Norris, she has this quote where she says, If I had to find one word to describe how belief came to take hold in me, it would be repetition. And I think that word uh, sort of beautifully gets at what is behind um, what is really the gift and the value of meditation. It's this uh, repetition, this reminder of 
who we are in Christ, who we are called to be in Christ, and to continually sort of allow that to take root in us and to lean more fully into that life to which we're called. So meditation, particularly meditation on scripture has been just a gift to me in that area. I'd encourage you to give it a try. Take just a couple minutes um, this day and uh, I'm going to pray for you as we go. Loving Father, uh, I thank you. I thank you even for the example and just the real story of the disciples that we get to witness in uh, Mark's gospel. God, I I sense in myself it's easy to feel Jesus's frustration with them, and I also sense in myself it's so easy to forget um, about just the abundant goodness, the abundant um, grace that you offer, uh, this metaphor of just bread baskets billowing over. God, I pray um, this day that like Unlike the disciples, I wouldn't miss that, that I would be mindful um, instead of living from a place of scarcity and worry, um, that I would have an image of your body just being broken and given and multiplied before me. That the, the heart behind that is just a, one of sincere love. And may I trust your words that that grace that you give is sufficient. Thank you for this day. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.